steel. This strong, versatile alloy is a fundamental part of our lives. From paper clips to skyscrapers, subways to scalpels, it forms the material backbone of our civilization. Steel is made by combining large amounts of the element iron with smaller amounts of various other elements, imbuing it with strength and durability. The advent of steel making parallels our development as a species, but with an estimated 80% of measured economic iron ore reserves already mined, could we be facing a future without steel? The answer is no. We're headed toward a new Iron Age that is in fact leaner, cleaner, and infinitely greener. But to understand why, we first need to understand a little history. Classical anthropology divides technological prehistory into three ages. The Stone Age, when our earliest ancestors relied on crude tools made from various types of stone and bones. The Bronze Age, marked by the advent of metallurgy, when civilizations across Eurasia began using copper and bronze to make tools and weapons. And the Iron Age, when humanity first adopted the widespread use of iron and started making crude steel over 3,000 years ago. While the advantages of steel were apparent, it remained difficult to manufacture in large quantities. All of that changed in the 1700s with the coming of the Industrial Revolution and the invention of the modern blast furnace. Fueled by coking coal, these huge furnaces gave the world its first taste of iron making and mass produced crude iron stock. By adding flux, typically limestone, to the molten iron, iron makers were able to remove many of the natural impurities known as slag and manufacture vast quantities of relatively pure iron bars and ingots, or pigs. This pig iron was shipped around the world to be wrought by blacksmiths or remelted and recast. The next major leap forward in steelmaking came as a result of the massive technological boom created by the Second World War. With worldwide demand for steel at an all-time high, the widespread adoption of the basic oxygen furnace, or BOF process, happened virtually overnight. This advent allowed steelmakers to move molten pig iron from the blast furnace into a BOF vessel into which pure oxygen could be blown, effectively and beneficially lowering the carbon content of the alloy. But integrated BOFs pollute just as much as their blast furnace predecessors because both are coal dependent. In the 1960s, North American steelmakers popularized the electric arc furnace, or EAF. EAFs do not integrate blast furnaces and do not use coking coal reductant. Rather, they melt pig iron and other metallics using charged electrodes, facilitating the manufacture of steel with massively reduced levels of emissions. Today, in the Great Lakes Area Steel Manufacturing District bordering the U.S. and Canada, where more than 80 large manufacturing facilities produce 60% of North America's steel, EAFs outnumber BOFs two to one. Good news for the environment, but globally, the adoption of EAFs has been slower as the cost and availability of electricity still outweighs the cost of coking coal in many parts of the world.